Welcome to Declassify Malaysia. In Chapter 25, we will discuss the declassified document on Malaysia. CAB 134-1555 CPC 1457-2 dated 4 December 1957. The document is entitled Borneo Territories Cabinet Colonial Policy Committee Minutes Approving Initiation of Public Discussion of Closer Association. The meeting was chaired by Lord Kilmuir, the Lord Chancellor, in the absence of the Prime Minister. The meeting was attended by Home Foreign Secretary, Lennox Boyd, Colonial Office, Lord Hailsham, Lord President. As you can see, the British Prime Minister Harold Macmill Macmillan was also supposed to be in the meeting. The memorandum from Mr. Lennox Boyd, who, who works as Secretary of State for the Colonies, entitled Assessing the Possibility of Closer Association of the Borneo Territories, was presented to this committee by the Colonial Secretary about the possibility of a closer association between the colonies of Sarawak and North Borneo and protected state of Brunei. Here in the document, the status of Sarawak and North Borneo as of 4 December 1957 is colonies, while the status of Brunei is protected state. The documents specify that the idea of closer association of Sarawak, North Borneo, and Brunei has been in British mind for some years, both locally and, the and in the United Kingdom. They have been thinking about this closer association for a long time. There was already some degree of cooperation between the three territories administratively. In local opinion in North Borneo and Sarawak, they recently appeared to favor public discussion of the conception of a closer association. But why did the British hesitate to proceed immediately with the closer association of the Borneo territories? This idea has been canvassed for so many years. The reason is that the British are afraid by creating a larger political unit such as closer association of Borneo territories will stimulate the growth of nationalist parties in each of the territory which, which will pressure for separate independence. The British are afraid that Sarawak will become independent by its own. North Borneo will become independent and Brunei will become independent on their own separately. Instead of creating a larger political unit through a concept of closer association between these three territories, the British are afraid that if these smaller territories become independent separately, each of them will not survive on their own. The British, based on their colonial experience, know that this possibility is highly likely to happen. Therefore, the British feel this responsibility on their shoulder to not let the colonies and protected state to fail just a few years after gaining independence. And I quote, Mr. Norman Pennell, debate in House of Commons dated 17 April 1959, where he begged a motion that this House is op of opinion that, as it is the declared general policy of Her Majesty government, to develop in its colonial territories the greatest practicable measure of self-government within, within the Commonwealth. It is desirable for Her Majesty Government to evolve a positive policy 
for those smaller territories where difficulties might arise in regard to the achievement of complete independence within the Commonwealth. Let me quote several statements from the British on the policy of decolonization process of their colonies. So that easily for us to understand the approach taken by the British in dealing with the decolonization process in Borneo. Mr. Oliver Stanley said in 1943, we are pledged to guide colonial people along the road to serve government within the framework of the British Empire. It is not part of our policy to confer political advance which are unjustified by circumstances or to grant self-government to those who are not yet trained in its use. Eight years later, another conservative colonial secretary, the then Mr. Oliver Littleton, said that the government were aiming at helping the colonial territories to attain self-government within the British Commonwealth. Labour Colonial Secretary, namely the Right Honourable Member of Wakefield, Mr. Critch Jones, who said in his annual report to Parliament in 1948, the central purpose of British colonial policy is simple. It is to guide the colonial territories to responsible self-government within the Commonwealth in condition which ensure that to the people to the people concerned, both a fair standard of living and freedom from oppression from any quarters. The British want to make sure that these colonies will survive and thrive after they leave them. Therefore, based on the British colonial experience, closer association would be the best option for the smaller colonial territories, such as Sarawak, North Borneo, and Bunai. This is smaller colonial territories. The consensus view between Malcolm McDonnell, the Commissioner General in South East Asia, and the governors of Sarawak, Sir Alexander Weddell, and North Borneo, Sir William Codrick Rickton Good, was that the British influence in Borneo territories could best be preserved by encouraging the movement towards closer association. What it means by British influence here is that the British want to properly decolonize the Borneo territories through a peaceful means and afterwards the international relation between the Borneo territories and the British will continue. The British don't want any problem, protest, war of independence or whatsoever which can have tainted the future relationship between the British and Borneo territories in the future. After the, after the decolonization process. The British believe that by creating a closer association of Borneo territories, they will be able to create a strong political unit between these territories. will create a strong political unit that will survive the uncertainty after the decolonization process. Therefore, the British will have nothing to worry about the condition of their former colonies after they gain independence. It must be noted here, if the colonies fail after they gain independence, suka-suka independent, sendiri-sendiri, the responsibility due to the failure of the, of the decolonization process will be traced back to the British. The British can be held in responsible for such a failure. The British don't want that to happen to Borneo territories, especially Brunei, as Brunei held important oil field in the region. This is not because of economy. Eh? If the British make some mistake, the economic importance of oil field in Brunei might fall into the wrong hand. It might fall into the hands of British opponent in the region. Definitely, the British don't want this to happen. There are serious strategic consequences at stake. What would happen if the oil field fall into the communists? The British don't want this to happen. This is why the British goes a long way to ensure that 
political stability and a stronger political unit should be created between Sarawak, North Borneo and Brunei before they left the region. Therefore, the Cabinet Colonial Policy Committee, the Cabinet, British Cabinet, on 4 December 1957, feel it right to suggest that the possibility of some form of association between the territories concerned might merit public discussion. The British then launched the policy of encouraging the public discussion on closer association of Borneo territories tentatively and strategically to the local people to newspaper, radio, meetings, and so on. They did it covertly but actively to encourage the public to discuss about closer, closer association of Borneo. What we see very interesting in the declassified document is that the British also prepared to withdraw the plan of closer association of Borneo territories if it was not well received by the public. The British actually doesn't want to impose this concept to the people of Borneo. If the people don't want it, they will withdraw the plan. Why did the British acting like this? The British already learned their lesson when they created Central African Federation in 1953. The Central African Federation fell in 1963 because the British imposed the concept to the local people. They don't want the same thing to happen to Borneo. The British has no intention to impose the closer association of Borneo territories. The British only encourage the public discussion, discussion on the idea. And if the local people want it, they will have to pursue that objective. If the people don't like it, they will withdraw the plan immediately. The British would have no problem in gaining the support from Sarawak and North Borneo on closer association as these territories is their colonies and they have full control of their internal affairs. Their concern is Brunei, as the British has limited power in interfering with the internal affairs in Brunei due to several agreements that they have made with the Sultan of Brunei in the past. And Brunei is currently a protected state of the British. The plan for closer association, therefore, would be depend upon the reaction of the Sultan of Brunei. At this stage, the British only have a premature administrative setup of a federal system for the Borneo territories, administered by a commissioner for the Borneo territories, together with an executive council representative of all three territories. There will be executive council representative from Sarawak, Brunei, and North Borneo. Here, the declassified documents confirm that Cabinet Colonial Policy Committee, Cabinet, British Cabinet, approved the proposal in CPC 5734, given by Alan Lennox Boyd, the Secretary of State for the Colonies, on the possibility of closer association of the Borneo territories. Thank you for watching.